okay, with the learners in the textbook, this very book in my hand, read the phonics for nursery schools, book two. So ideally, the teacher is supposed to revise the previous lessons with the children, all right, from the scheme of work or the table of contents in the textbook. Please take the children through the previous knowledge, all right, asking them the diagram A, I sounds A, it's expected to tell you A. O, A sound, they should reply you O. I, E sound I. O, U sound OW. O, I sound OI. E, E sound E. And A, R sound AH. O, R sound OR. It's good that you reflect that R, even in the R, because our children are not so used to, you know, what they are commonly, uh, the individual letter sounds that they are used to from A to Z. So if you just tell them R, ah, I can tell you that 95% of them will write just letter A. So when we have R, as I used to tell them that, a, um, tongue don't roll when there is no R. So when there is a letter R, it's though in British English, it's not compulsory. In fact, it's not usually emphasized. But the fact that we are ESLs, English is not our native language, so in this case, to save your head as a teacher and the head of pupils, it's advisable that when you have R, you roll your tongue, just for sake of clarity, all right? The proponents of British English may want to really debate this with you and all of that. They do this as well, so please do not be confused, so go A-R-R. -R. E R R A R R E R R. So I, uh, there had been a situation whereby I dictated to these learners. All right, when I asked them, they wrote majority of them wrote C A for me, but when I said car, they all included the R, which is the normal spelling of C A R car. So. Please take note of that. Now, taking off from there, today we want to look at uh, Unit 9. Unit 9, where we have the diagraph. Forget, ask those children, that, what does diagraph mean? Diagraph means, uh, a, diagraph, a diagraph is two letters that make one sound. Diagraph is two letters that make one sound. So we have this in English, whereby, and that is what this particular textbook treats all through, from the beginning to the end. It's only the revision uh, exercise page at the very beginning that the writer, the author, tried to, you know, bring the children's mind back to three-letter words, okay, that are made up of single-letter sounds. All right, so in term one, we've covered from unit one to eight. So for the term, we are taking off from unit nine. Don't forget that you need something like this, a flashcard, all right, that you show to your learners and at once, they'll be able to tell you, all right? You can order this from us at Paysetters. We have them for sale and if you can, Make them yourself with the use of cardboard and marker boldly written, all right? So it makes your work very easy. You just pick out one at a time. Children, what sound is this? So you expect them to say O, A, O, A, I, I, all right? Sorry, A, I, A. Please take note of that, sorry. That's uh, an error on my part where I said A, I, I. But I know that majority used to make that mistake to get confused. And that is the essence of the creation of this card. That's one very interesting thing about it is the fact that um, we transcribe, we transcribe the letter sounds, sorry, back in it, yes. We transcribe the letter sounds 
for our learners to get okay so this is a when you have the card carrying uh the transcription well written by those who really understand then you not make that mistake again a i is a while i e is the one that sounds i i e i i hope you get that so you do this to revise all the previous lessons that have been taught in first term so this term we are kicking off okay on the short and long o o sound short and long o o sound all right yes i have the cut here the short o o sound o and the long o o sound u before i proceed let me present to you the learning objective the learning objectives lesson at the end of this lesson, the pupils should be able to differentiate between the short and long O, -O sounds. Two, attempt each of the activities in this unit that is your learners. All of them must be able to attempt each of the activities, the exercises given in this textbook, all right? Then thirdly, they should know the difference between tooth and teeth tooth and teeth. They should also know the difference between foot and feet. Singular, singular and plural coming to play there. And finally, for this very lesson, lastly, is the fourth learning objective is for your learners, okay, to understand how to relate with their tooth and foot. They have to understand this. So back to the lesson, all right? Uh, the style, according to Jolly Phonics, is that you introduce a, a lesson, a phonics lesson, with a short storyline. So the storyline we have here goes thus. Don't forget, you have to write in your on your board, on your classes board, okay, as I have done here. Yes, this is my board, uh, an example of your classroom board. You write today's date, all right? I prefer this method actually because all those long manners of writing date that I see class teachers do in most of our schools, it baffles me fine. You could say these things orally. Today is uh, Tuesday, 14th January. 2020 2020 you could say that verbally for the children why you go the figure way like this for easy writing children at this class do not really have the strength and capacity to write so long so they'll spend five ten minutes copying dates alone from the board not to talk of the main lesson they have to write please let's watch this very well so my subject is diction in english all right then uh, my lesson is coming in three parts, okay? Part A is phonics. Part A is phonics, all right? And the topic up under the phonics is OO, the short diagraphs OO, O, diagraph OO sound O, and diagraph OO sound U. This is coming from Read Lead Phonics Book 2 pages 25 to 30. So the first one, all right, the first uh, page, that's unit nine, unit nine of the textbook. Yes, the story line goes to, so don't forget right on the board, short O O with those examples. If you can draw, draw, that will be perfect. If you cannot draw, I'm talking to you class teacher. If you cannot draw these pictures, pick your people's textbook and show them the pictures there. Of course, they'll have their books open right in front of them. But on your board, just write the short O O sound. Okay, then do this, do this, this, and this. Writing just the spelling of the words alone. And you show them the pictures of the words in the textbook. So the storyline goes thus. Short O-O storyline. 
Some children visited Mr. Johnson. They saw a cuckoo clock on the wall. As the clock struck three, cuckoo pops in and out of the clock saying, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I take that again. Some children visited Mr. Johnson. They saw a cuckoo clock on the wall. As the clock struck three, Coco pops in and out of the clock saying, Oh, 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 oh. The phonics rhyme for this, the jolly phonics rhyme for this goes thus. Um, who wants to be a Coco? Who wants to be a Coco? Who wants to be a Coco? Oh, 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 oh. That the more reason we have to take this topic together. One, because of time, the, the content of the textbook has to be exhausted at the end of the session. Two, to place side by side these two um, diagrams for the children to know that they have their differences. And this rhyme that I just sang has combined the two sounds, the, the couple bird, okay, this is it. If you know those, uh, gone at those days, the pendulum clock. So there is the cuckoo clock type of it. So that this the cuckoo is a bird, is the name of a living bird, which is being represented here by the picture of a bird in a typical uh, wall clock that is of pendulum type, okay, that rings out at the top of the hour, okay? So, who wants to be a cuckoo? The sound that the cuckoo bird makes is oh ooh, oh ooh, oh ooh. So the o oh and the oo sound also exist in our everyday speech, which we are going to see in the word examples we have in this lesson. All right. So short o o sound o o as in wool, not wool. Yes, this is the central point of this lesson. Let us take note. This is where diction meets phonics. What did I say? This is where diction meets phonics. Combining at pacetes, what we do is balanced literacy, where we combine whole language with phonics in order to have a balanced literacy, to take every child along and every learner along. All right? This is IQSPDE training. Our slogan for it is no one should be left behind. All right, so wool, not wool. This is a wool. If you really want to speak English the way of the native speakers, correct pronunciation is wool. Foot, o o, short o o sounds o o as in foot. Short o o sounds o as in wood. Short o o sounds o as in look. All right, you may. Next is page 26 of activities. All right, activities where the pupils are asked to circle the diagraphs, the diagraph of OO in the following objects. So simply put, just guide the children through because they have to treat this very page in class. Uh, immediately after you've taken them through this, they treat this. So. An example has been done for them there, okay, where the OO will be circled in each of the word examples. So take your time, teacher, to pronounce the words for them. Wool, hook, ho hoof. Okay, let me confirm that to you. Is it hoof or hoof? H-O-O-F. H-O-F, yes, it's hoof in British English, but hoof in American English. American English also recognizes it as hoof. So it's not out of place. You can pronounce, but because this is Nigeria, a uh, model of English usage is British, all right? But for the sake of this particular lesson, we'll be pronouncing the H-O-O-F as hoof which is American pronunciation of it, American way of pronouncing the word. All right, so the next, after half, we have 
rogue, rogue, rogue. You may have to confirm that too. Rogue, is it rogue or rogue? Let me show you that. R O O K. It's rogue. So I'm saying it uh, with all sense of confidence that it's rogue and not rogue. Then the last word example there is cookie. Cookie, not cookies. Cookie. All right, I hope you get that. Cookie, not cookies. This very one is cookie. So again, I take that again. Wool, hook, hoof, rogue, and cookie. Then the next activity, the children are to cross out the pictures that lack O O in their names. That's this time around. Yes, you can say that lacks O O in their names or the, the, that lacks the sound of the short O O sound, which is O. Follow the given example. So the first example there is sweet. So definitely it does not in any way sound O. So the sweet is automatically going to be crossed out. So you take the children through all of this. They are to, you know, a very simple way to go about it is for them to just look for, okay, which picture is on this line, okay, and this page. So any picture that they found here and here, okay, would not be crossed out of here. Any picture they found here that is not found here and does not exist here will be crossed out. But ideally, that's a shortcut way of teaching them anyway. If you actually want to take them through and you really want them to understand, take them through each picture. The second picture is grain. There you can see uh, corn, rice, and beans, I think. Okay, so that is grain. You ask them, children, does this sound O? They tell you no. So what do we do to it? They should reply you, we cross it out. So you do this continuously from the beginning to the end. I want to believe you can name each of the pictures. So this is sweet, grain, hoof, foot, foot, not foot. Then you have the rail line, rail line. The next one is look, look, book, book, not book. So this picture is not found here and it's not found here, but they are set of books so it contains the OO sound, the OO, so they are not, please tell the children they are not to cross this out. Obviously, they are books, all right? So they contain, they do not lack the OO sound. They do not lack the OO sound. I wonder why my cursor is going to hide. So the next one is sickle, sickle, like sickle cell, sickle, S-C. S I C K L E. So that is sickle. All right. Next to sickle is the koki. Next to koki is wool. Next to wool is rook. Next to rook is cat. The add to cat, C A R T, that we use when you go to superstores to buy uh, provisions for the family. Then the next one is uh, a house. I think we have this picture this very picture in the previous pages yes it's been presented before let me quickly confirm that to you okay it's in this text it's treated as ban 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 b-a-r-n so pronounce it as such so it lasts for all two it's going to be crossed out so back to page 26 uh, yes page 26 next to the ban is spoon and lastly is the picture of rain rain falling so the children are to cross out those words that lack the o sound as i've demonstrated and leave the ones that that contain the o, o sound all of these activities are meant you know to deepen the children's understanding of the lesson then this very one too yes book the the, the, the question says it should ring the words that contain o o o that's the short o o sound o so book good cook soap 
show and talk will be circled. You don't need to tell them they know. Just guide them to read the instruction. There is not today they've been doing it. They did it last year, so they'll know how to go about that part of the text themselves. Don't forget, class work should be written on those parts of the textbook. After that, they turn to the next page. Actually, what we do for them here, because of the limited time that is always available, we we just we go we take the children through the tricky words, pronunciation of the given tricky words okay on that very page so we have live give so the letter i sound a in live and give you may also take your time to let them know that okay if they see the same word l-i-v-e written on the screen of a television for example that one is not to be pronounced live it will be pronounced live live so same one word can be pronounced in two different ways but they'll be used in different situations that you can demonstrate to them to live okay in a house to live in a house and to watch a program live on television i hope that is clear then give 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 you don't have to emphasize and do not be surprised that uh, how can gib is it not give it's not give it's give don't forget this is diction in English lesson. We are being we're trying to be 100% phonetical in our pronunciation of words. So next to that is only. So to make it simple for the children, just apply the whole language method here by spelling each word. L-I-V-E, live. G-I-V-E, give. O-N-L-Y, only. S-A-I-D, said. L-I-T-T-L-E, little. All right. I, now, for those you, for deeper understanding, again, you can sound the words for them. L -a -v, live, L I V E, live, give, G A V, give, G I V E, give, only, O N L E, only, O N L E, only, O N L Y, only, said, S A D, said, S A I D, said. Little, 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 l i t t l e, little. So once they've gotten that, then you go ahead to dictate for to the children. You dictate one word, okay, from the uh, diagraph lesson, the short o. All right, you can dictate number one, wool. The children are allowed, perhaps for whatever reason, to go turn back to. Uh, page 25 okay so pick the word wool for themselves and come and write it on the dictation page what you shouldn't do is to point at it for them but their ability to go back and identify wool and come and write it here shows yes they are actually learning so by the time they write it here under the dictation then we we can rest assured that yes they at the end of this lesson they can write wool themselves without looking at the book anymore so you pick one word from the uh, diagraph lesson pick one word from the tricky words that's the method we use for them anyway and we'd like you to carry on that except you have a better suggestion to approaching this so one diagraph word one tricky word uh, should be dictated so number one wool number two live then you may not actually begin from wool you can even make look your number one dictation right look so their ability if they you can tell them turn to page 25 look for look all right spell the word look if they're able to spell it from there very good tell them to go and write it in number one where you have dictated so i'm saying as teachers it should be dynamic you know do not make your lesson too cheap uh don't just go one way traffic so instead of dictating the number very first picture you can apply the dynamism by beginning with the last word on the page so you do this all right for, from number one to ten so of course you have more than five words in the diagraph lesson from here to here and you have five tricky word examples to give 
you know, to dictate to them. So you alternate the words, one from here, one from the tricky word pick from one to 10, and you help them mark at the end of the day that you mark it as guided because telling them to go and look it, look for a word and come and write it is a form of guidance. And their ability to write it and get it right confirms to you that yes, they can identify that word and next time they see it, they can pronounce it on their own. So lastly is the, uh, is the reading time, which is the concluding part of this lesson, reading time, all right? So you take them through this. And that is a good cook. She cooked for my family. Today, she finished cooking when I was still reading my books. She stood, looked at me and smiled to say the lunch was ready. Read it again. Children read after me. Ada is a good cook. She cooks for my family. Today, she finished cooking when I was still reading my books. She stood, looked at me, and smiled to say the lunch was ready. So this um, reading time passage is also helping to lay emphasis on the, or, or, the short or, or lesson, don't forget. The next page is where we have the long O, which I will take in another video to avoid a uh, uh, lengthy one for you here. So after reading this, let the children write, write it out, okay, on the space provided at the end of page 27. So that is it. That is it for now. Next is speak right. Speak right. They have an exercise book. If your pupils do not have exercise book for diction, no problem. But just write this on the board. A tooth. A tooth is okay. Sorry, let me paint this. It will come in the next lesson. I'll bring it in the next lesson because of the foot that is here. This foot. Okay, let me just take it here. Sorry, that will be my A. This is what you treat in. Um, units uh, unit nine give them this particular lesson for unit nine bend the second one to the unit 10 lesson so your speak rights for unit nine is don't say leg when you mean to say foot your feet your feet at the end of your leg your feet at the end of your leg raise your leg for them to see or you Yes, as a teacher, you are not putting, may not be, even if you are putting on socks, still raise your leg or you call out a child, take off the socks, show them a foot, all right? So one for, at the end of one leg is a foot, at the end of the two legs is the feet. So below your, yes, the, the foot is below the ankle. Again, your feet at the end of your leg or below your ankle please take note of that don't forget that the ankle ends is another part of, at the end of the leg before you get to the foot so on one leg at the end of one leg is a foot singular at the end of the two legs are feet this is a form of uh, singular and plural that does not receive s to form its plural so finally etiquette the children. This is still in line with uh, lesson nine, unit nine lesson. So do not walk around with your feet. Always put on your shoe, okay? Yes, they will answer you that. So that balances lesson nine. So the A that we have here will come in uh, the next video where I'll be treating the long O O sound. Thank you for listening. See you in the next lesson. Feel free to ask me questions in any aspects you have any challenge. Thank you.